Mondays at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Another vicious dog attack in San Antonio. The latest happening yesterday when a 53 year old man was sent to a hospital with a serious wound on his neck. And this time, police say the owner allowed it to happen. Yeah, but just because a dog ends up biting someone doesn't mean it will necessarily be put down. Garrett Berger tells us how Animal Care Services investigates. Police say an argument may have led to a dog attack on the west side Thursday when they say the owner purposely allowed his dog to attack someone else and become one of the roughly 3,500 animal bites reported every year in San Antonio. There it's a scratch, uh, severe to a mild bite. If ACS investigators confirm a dog bite has occurred, then the state mandates a 10-day quarantine, which will often be at ACS. The owner gets their dog back at the end, but they have to pay for the boarding and if it was a bad attack. So serious bodily injury is severe ripping and tearing of flesh. ACS would try to get a warrant to seize the dog ahead of a hearing at which a judge could order it to be euthanized. Though they could also order it back to the owner if certain defenses are at play. Whether the animal is defending its property, was the animal defending its owner? Additionally, ACS will hold on to a dog longer if it's doing a dangerous dog investigation, but that requires someone file an affidavit first. Afterward, owners of dangerous dogs have to follow lifelong requirements like muzzling, purchasing insurance, and signage. And if a designated dangerous dog gets loose and bites again, ACS says it will seek a compliance hearing in front of a judge. Then yes, she can order the dog to be uh, destroyed. When we talked with ACS this morning, they did not have a plan yet for the latest attack, telling us they would be meeting with police to talk next steps. SAPD has already arrested the 40-year-old owner on felony charges including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and dog attack, causing serious bodily injury. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Neighbors living behind the Migrant Resource Center on San Pedro have mixed feelings about the surge there. Right outside that center, you're going to see dozens of people sitting on the sidewalk, waiting to figure out their next steps. Many are here from Venezuela, hoping to be granted asylum. Neighbors say they've seen some of those people trickle into their neighborhood. One neighbor says they felt unsafe. Another says the temporary neighbors aren't bothering her. They've been through a war, war zone. They've struggled. They've worked hard to get here and they've put their life on the line. Why not help them? Migrants we spoke with say they're hoping to head to other parts of the country to look for work. San Antonio police are investigating a possible road rage shooting that happened this morning. This happened around 8 a.m. on Loop 410 near Cherry Ridge. SAPD says a man and woman called police to an area off the side of the highway there. And when police got there, they found another man inside the car with a gunshot wound. Police say they got two different stories about what happened, but they do believe road rage was the cause. Someone cut someone off or maybe brake check someone. Some kind of aggressive driving. He has been taken to the hospital. He is in stable condition. They were not they were non life threatening injuries. Right now, investigators are still looking into if anyone will face charges. And tonight, San Antonio police are looking for the driver who hit a woman with their car early this morning. It happened about 3 a.m. in the 11,000 block of Amherst Drive. That's near Lock Hill Selma Road on the north side. Officers say the woman trying to run across the street when she was hit by a vehicle. The suspect drove off after hitting her. The victim taken to University Hospital right now. It's not known what her condition is. That suspect has not been found. One of the best places to witness a once in a lifetime eclipse is in the Texas Hill Country. Thousands of people expected to flock to that area over the next few weeks. And Camelia Juarez tells us how first responders are preparing to make sure everyone there can enjoy the eclipse safely. We have been preparing for 18 months. Kendall County Emergency Management Coordinator Jeff Fink just finished a trial run exercise for the annular eclipse next month. He's sharing what he learned with surrounding area first responders. We've looked at a lot of after action reports from places where the 2017 eclipse went through and we've taken those and, and tried to learn from them. Fink says the biggest concern is the influx of traffic coming into already congested areas like Bernie, Fredericksburg, and Bandera County. Experts are expecting thousands of people to visit our area. That's probably our first and foremost concern is keeping intersections and highways open so that emergency services can move freely 
Um, and again, not knowing how many people may show up. With that many people in town, Fink says 911 dispatchers are expected to be overwhelmed with calls. So Kendall County is considering opening a phone bank. Because that's the other concern we have is 911 calls inundate our dispatch center because people are going to block driveways, they're going to park in places that people don't want them. For people visiting our area to witness this celestial event, Don Davies with the Hill Country Alliance says resources will be limited when people come into town, including internet access. Our cell service is going to be very taxed, so less likelihood of being able to use those GPS services on your phone or mobile devices. So obviously in advance if you can, though it sounds a bit archaic, print up a paper map to let you know where you're going. For people who are lucky enough to live in prime viewing location, Davy says to stock up on groceries and fuel and enjoy the eclipse from home. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. A lot of preparation for a pretty exciting event. I know our weather team has got the countdown going. We certainly do. Everybody is getting very excited. Again, this is an annular solar eclipse, so we're going to see the moon move in front of the sun and create that ring of fire effect. That happens on October 14th, so we are just 22 days away. Make sure that you get your glasses ready. And of course, we have so many details on the eclipse up on our website, ksat.com. Until then, plenty of sunshine right now, and it is hot. 97 degrees, feeling like 100 when you factor in the humidity. If you are stepping out over the next few hours for any Friday night plans, expect those temperatures to fall through the 90s and eventually into the 80s later on tonight. It is still going to be unseasonably hot into the upcoming weekend, but we do have a few pattern changes that could spark a few storm chances into early next week. We'll get to that timeline coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Mia. Let's take a look at traffic out there on this Friday evening. This is I-37 here at Cesar Chavez. You can see that the traffic's slow going there as it looks like there's some cones there off to the side, have everybody kind of slowing down around this curve. Uh, so something to be aware of, but the other lanes, they're zipping right along. It's official, the San Antonio Spurs Arena, now the Frost Bank Center. Today's Spurs officials announced work will begin this month to change all the signs in and around the arena. We're also told the majority of the signs should be done by the start of the NBA season. The Frost Bank Center logo will also be on the different versions of the team's court. A, re a reveal of the new logo will happen on October 7th at the Silver and Black Open Scrimmage. Flu season is just around the corner and University Health is hosting free drive through flu shot events. The first one starts early tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. at Freeman Coliseum. It goes until noon. Doctors at University Health recommend you get the flu shot now before the season starts next month. But they say remember, just because you get the shot does not mean you won't get the flu. But everybody to have appropriate expectations of what the influenza shot does, the flu shot does, right? So it is not 100% effective in preventing people from getting sick with influenza. The second flu shot event is in October. We have that full schedule on our website at ksat.com. Also tomorrow is our annual Head for the Cure 5K to raise money for brain cancer research. The event in honor of our late news director, Jim Boyle, who passed away 10 years ago. Online registration is closed, but you can still register the day of the event. The 5K starts tomorrow morning at 8 at Providence High School on North St. Mary Street. And coming up in our next half hour, help in a place you might not expect it. How a local bar is serving up a safe space for people recovering from alcohol addiction. Plus, first thing that popped into my mind is I am a mom. How am I going to be a mom if I can't use my land? After the break, the journey for a Pleasanton mother hasn't been an easy one. After losing her hands and feet after giving birth to her daughter, an update on her recovery and how she's inspiring people all around her. Here's what we're working on for you tonight on the night beat. A major influx of migrants straining cities and agencies on the border. What migrant advocates here in San Antonio are saying about the situation closer to home. This story and more, plus Friday Night Football, of course, tonight on the Night Beat at 10. 
It has been an emotional and a physical journey for a Pleasanton mother who lost her hands and her feet because of an infection she got just days after giving birth. Yeah, we first introduced you to Christina Pacheco last year. Her body went into septic shock which is the most dangerous stage of sepsis. September was actually Sepsis Awareness Month, and our RJ Mark has caught up with Pacheco to see how she's doing now. Awesome. Every little um, victory that I've done, my son has been proud of me and happy. Every small step is a big victory for Christina Pacheco. The Pleasanton mom and wife has gone through months of intense rehab after she went into septic shock last October. I knew this was going to be really hard and it wasn't going to be easy. Christina had just given birth to her second child, a baby girl named Amelia. Doctors discharged her, but her body started to shut down days later and she was rushed back to the hospital. The infection ultimately cost her both hands and feet. That's not an easy thing to hear. And, you know, the first thing that popped into my mind is I am a mom. How am I going to be a mom if I can't use my limbs? Being a mom is what motivates Christina. Doctors okay. gave her less than a 10% chance to survive. It does make me emotional, like, when I think that I couldn't have... I could have died and not been here for my babies. She returned home three months after her limbs were amputated, reunited with her babies and family. Did you have a good day? Yeah. You had a good day. Look. You're so pretty. He still is my chicle, is what they call him, because he will not do anything without mama. She's still getting used to her prosthetics and getting back into a daily routine. Yesterday I wasn't able to hold a bottle and feed her. Oh, today I am able to do that. So, you know, it's just little things, little victories. She's also back at the office, working as a school psychologist with her family away from home. There wasn't a week that they wouldn't go bring me cookies or snacks or, you know, just for the cheese man. <laughs> <laughs> the work she's <laughs> it kept me it kept me going the support from her husband Jacob parents family and friends has been incredible there was times that I just wanted to give up or you know days that I just like I can't I can't today but she's not going to give up a saying outside her home reads in Spanish mañana será bonito which means tomorrow will be beautiful it's her mantra to keep pushing I did survive and I am here and um, you know, trying to do my best for my babies and set an example for them. God saved me not only for um, my babies and my family, but, you know, to help other people. Reporting from Pleasanton, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And what an example <sighs> yes. she sets Incredible. for people who are going through so much. You just think about the perseverance that that takes to have such a dramatic change and a new baby on top of everything. So keep going, Christina. Yeah. What do I have to complain about? Mm. Look at Christina. Yeah, right. she, just, she just keeps going, a warrior, a survivor, a mother above all. The biggest inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, we will, of course, continue to root for her and all of her success. Yes. All right, so let's talk about the heat because that has been a big theme of this week, and that is just going to continue into the upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, the first official day of astronomical fall, but it's not going to feel like it. It is going to feel like summer with highs still in the upper 90s expected both tomorrow and into Sunday. However, as we head into the early portions of next week, we are expected to find a few changes to our weather pattern, which could introduce a storm chance back into the forecast, especially by Monday evening and Monday night. So we're going to talk all about it starting off, though, with your Saturday. If you have any plans tomorrow morning expect it to be muggy and warm the humidity is going to build back in through the overnight hours so you will notice that first thing tomorrow with the forecast low around 78 degrees by 7 a.m here in san antonio we are expecting the cloud cover to return as well by lunchtime we'll start to see more peaks of sunshine at a temperature around 90 degrees so those temperatures are going to warm up pretty fast throughout the day a high around 98 with even more sunshine by this time tomorrow now in Converse, a few low triple digits certainly possible for places like Pleasanton, Floresville, stretching over to Seguin and New Braunfels, 98 in Canyon Lake, that forecast high tomorrow, 98 in Bandera, and 99 in Hondo. More of the same is expected, maybe even building by a degree or two on Sunday, but then notice on your temperature trend here into early next week, those high temperatures come down more to the tune of the low to mid 90s, and that follows a few storm chances that we have in the forecast 
forecast, especially by Monday. So let's talk about that again. Here's your Saturday morning. There's the cloud cover that works back in. Tomorrow is expected to be a mostly dry day across South Central Texas with high pressure still in control, but that high pressure system is going to move southwest, especially by Sunday evening and Sunday night. That will leave just enough space for a weak frontal boundary to work into Central Texas. We could see a few isolated storms pop up mainly north of San Antonio by Sunday night, especially across portions of the hill country stretching over to the southern Edwards Plateau. We take a break into Monday morning and then a few pieces of energy are going to move across the Lone Star State Monday night. Combine that with that boundary still in place and we have that 40% potential for some scattered showers and storms in the forecast. So definitely something to check back in on in the coming days. But until then, there's that big blue H. High pressure is still in control of our weather pattern. So we are pretty quiet right now here in San Antonio. It is a different story though, especially near North Carolina. Take a look at this. This is actually tropical storm Ophelia. This is the latest information and from the National Hurricane Center on that tropical storm winds now at 70 miles per hour gusting upwards of 85 miles per hour. It's going to continue to work farther up to the north, likely making landfall near Wilmington as a tropical storm, and then it will weaken as it works farther northward and approach the New England states over the weekend. So for our friends and family out that way, we will continue to monitor that. Some heavy rain, gusty winds, and storm surge expected. And then elsewhere out in the tropics, we've got another area to watch. Now a high chance for tropical development there with that disturbance moving into the central Atlantic. No issues expected for south central Texas. Until then, it will be the heat that we will be having to deal with this weekend. And by the way, the humidity likely making those feels like temperatures feel even hotter than the air temperature. So stay hydrated. We'll monitor that storm chance on Monday and then those temperatures come down just a little bit next week. <laughs> yeah, we keep waiting for fall. We certainly do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mia, especially football players and right? fans. Yes. waiting for the fall. We're in week five. We're still in the 90s, but Whew. perfect weather for a road trip, wouldn't you say? Perfect <laughs> weather for a road trip. I like that. Yes. Stockdale, one of our teams featured in our week five big game coverage road trip will face Freer, Stockdale also known as the Dale. Plus, CJ Stroud breaking records and racking up impressive stats in just two NFL starts. Really, we all want a district champ championship. You know, that, that's really what we're working towards, you know. We can always go far in the playoffs, but that district championship is really what we're working towards. Adam Hathaway and the Stockdale football team two weeks out from district competition, and the Brahmas have their sights set on that 14-2A D1 title. It's time for Big Board Sports. A frustrating outcome for area football programs last Friday when lightning wiped out several games. Freer and Stockdale are two of the teams who didn't play, and now they must face each other with one less game under their belts. This is one of the last non-district games for Freer, who is undefeated entering Week 5, and Stockdale, who is 2-1. The Brahma's lone loss came against Ingram Moore in their season opener. It was a 14-13 loss that still lingers amongst the Stockdale squad. We should be definitely 3-0. Um, our first game was a big fluke. We um, didn't come out and play how we're supposed to. We definitely are a better team than that first week. Uh, the previous or the two games after that was definitely like how we should play and should we play the rest of the season. They're three and oh, they're, they've done a good job. They were very young last year. They have almost everybody coming back. So yeah, they're, they're definitely better. And so it's going to be a challenge for us. We need to show up and we need to do our jobs and take care of our business. And, and we, we better, uh, we better be ready for Friday night. Cause if not, then it could, it may not turn out the way we want it to. Last year, it was Stockdale who defeated Freer 47 to zero. We'll see how this matchup unfolds tonight in big game coverage during the night beat as part of this week's road trip. Here is our full BGC road trip route furthest away. It's Stockdale and Freer, then Lavernia hosts Sinton and the Marion football team welcomes Randolph to town. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Texans haven't done a great job protecting rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud, but it hasn't stopped. 
the number two overall pick from making room in the record books. Last week, Stroud's league-high 384 passing yards were the most by any Ohio State QB in the NFL. Stroud talks about how an old coach helped his growth at the QB position. My uh, assistant quarterback's coach at Ohio State pulled me to the side and he asked me, he was like, what does it mean to play quarterback? Like, what is like, what, what, what's like your job? And I'm like, to make plays? Like, I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I said to be a leader. He was like, yeah, that's right. Like being a leader, making plays, all that stuff is great. But he was like, your, your main job is to make people around you better like on the field and off. And I took that to heart. And ever since that moment, like I dedicated a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, like mental capacity, a lot of energy to that cause. Stroud playing so well. All right, well, the Arizona Cardinals have won six of the last seven meetings against the Dallas Cowboys. But this time around, the point spread is favoring the 2-0 Cowboys by 12 and a half points when they travel to Arizona this Sunday. The Dallas defense is in position to allow the fewest points through three games in franchise history. But this week, they'll be without cornerback Trayvon Diggs, who tore the ACL in his left knee during practice yesterday. Diggs had an interception last week against the Jets, and now he is out for the season. Bringing it back to high school football, David Sears is live at the scene from our big game coverage game of the week. Soon, Smithson Valley and Bernie Champion will kick off in a district showdown. How are things looking out there uh, at Cougar Stadium, David, without RJ? <laughs> well, well, Mary, you can tell I found the shade. And yeah, RJ was a game time decision, and apparently the decision was he wasn't ready for game time tonight. So you know what they say, when one goes down, another one's got to step up. Unfortunately, I'm the only one able to step up tonight because so, I'm solo. This is great timing. What you are watching is the Canyon Cougar Band. There's the, there's the girls carrying the flags, and then here comes the band behind them. So this is kind of an amazing, we, we don't get to see this very often in walking in. So, And what's amazing tonight is Smithson Valley is on a roll. And Canyon needs a win tonight in district. They lost their district opener last week. So they're looking for a huge win tonight against Smithson Valley. There we go. Okay. We're right in the right spot, I guess. So the Smithson Valley Rangers lost their opener. But they won three in a row. They're the top in the district. Canyon Cougars need a win tonight. They're going to buy next week, so they're going to be laying it all out on the line tonight. And I'm going to throw it back to you guys because I can't hear a thing. I got the band in my ear. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, let's shoot the band, Mark. This is great stuff. Yeah, let's listen to the band listen, a little I, bit. Let's listen to the band a little, David. There, there we go. <laughs> what? It feels I like a Friday it. night. That'll get you in the, the spirit right there. That's right. We'll be right back.